but once in a lifetime. You hear a story that leaves an indelible mark on your mind and your heart. I heard this story 38 years ago. It still resonates deep within me, and it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a tree, and she loved a boy, and the boy loved the tree. Every day, he would come and climb up her trunk, swing from her branches, eat her apples. When he was tired, he'd lie in her shade. When he was active, they'd play hide and go seek. One day, the boy carved in the trunk of the tree, tree, I love thee, and that made the tree very happy. But for some reason, the boy stayed away two whole days. When he came back, the tree was so happy, she literally shook with joy. She said, come boy, climb on my trunk, swing from my branches, eat apples and be happy. The boy said, uh-uh. In the last two days, I found out what real fun is like. So I need some money. You got any money? I have no money, said the tree. But pluck all my apples, sell them in the city, get money and be happy. So the boy plucked all her apples, and he went away, and the tree was happy. But now the boy stayed away a month. When he came back, the tree was so happy, she could hardly speak. She said, come boy, climb up my trunk, swing from my branches, eat up, and be happy. The boy said, life's a lot more serious than fun and games. I want to get married, settle down and have a family, so I need a house. Can you give me a house? The forest is my house, said the tree. But cut down my branches, boy, and build a house. The boy cut down all the branches, and he went away. And the tree was happy, but not really. A year passed. Finally, the boy returned. The tree said, come, boy, climb up my trunk and be happy. Yuck. I am bored, I'm disgusted with life, I want to get away to a foreign country, so I need a boat. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and build a boat, said the tree. The boy cut down her trunk and he sailed away. Forty years later when he returned, the tree looked up and said, but I have no apples, there's nothing to eat. My teeth are too weak to chew, said the boy. I have no branches, you can't swing. I'm too tired to swing. I have no trunk, you can't climb. I'm too old to climb. I'm sorry, said the tree. I have nothing to give you. Oh, uh, I don't need very much anymore, the boy said. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. And the tree, straightening herself up as majestically as she could, said, Well, an old stump is good for something. Come, boy, sit and rest. And the boy did, and the tree was happy. In Shel Silverstein's beautiful modern parable, which he calls the giving tree, when the tree freely surrenders her apples, her branches, and her trunk, I'm reminded of Jesus, of whom Paul wrote in Philippians, he emptied himself. He emptied himself. He cried out his heart, nailed up his hands, and poured out his blood to help us believe that he loves us. Significantly, Jesus chose the giving tree of his cross as the demonstrative sign of his absolute love for men and women, a love that did not count death to high a price, or in the words of the early church father, Cyril of Jerusalem, the mightiest act of love ever to arise from a human soul.